You are listening to a recording from the 2021 Pumanar Scholars Virtual Residency Fair. We would like to take a moment to thank the residency programs who have taken the time to present at our fair this year. This year's Pumanar Scholars Virtual Residency Fair is supported by Pumanar Recap, the best resource for your physiatry clinical preparation, audition rotations, board preparation, and beyond. Pumanar Recap offers 35 hours of review videos, hundreds of review questions, and even oral board cases. Head to pmnrrecap.com to learn more. Hey guys, thanks for having me. My name is Roger. I'm one of the PGY4 residents at Thomas Jefferson University. Um, really happy to be here tonight and get a chance to talk to you guys. I know you guys are busy. I think it's almost application cycle time and people have oil rotation, stuff like that. So um, really appreciative that we can spend some time and talk about Jefferson. Um, this is usually the kind of PowerPoint that we give for interview day, but I cut down a lot of it. Um, so it's more about like Philadelphia, what rotations we have, that kind of stuff. So um, I'll try to stick to the 15 minutes and then do questions after. Uh, it's just me. So if you have any questions, I will be trying to keep my eye on the chat. So, all right, here we go. All right, so welcome to virtual Philadelphia. Um, I kind of threw up a bunch of my favorite places, favorite spots. So more about me, I grew up in Jersey, um, close to New York City. And that was a consideration for me in terms of where I want to do residency. And um, growing up in New York City, I was kind of like, hmm, maybe I like New York programs, but I had a couple of away rotations in Philadelphia and just really loved the city in terms of um, how historical it was and how there's always like different things to do. We have great like pop-up stuff in different seasons. Um, and so it's just a great time. Uh, one of my favorite places in the top left, Spruce Street Harbor. Um, it's on the Delaware River, a bunch of hammocks, a good summer spot, nice vendors, good drinks. Um, can't forget the Philly sports. They're super passionate. Uh, the fans are about their teams, and I'm a big Sixers fan, uh, in addition to the Eagles. And as you see in the top right, um, if you have a family or friend, like a, a friend or family member from Philadelphia, they'll tell you the Eagles have won Super Bowl the last three years, ever since 2018. Um, but just cool spots uh, that we get to. And you can see in the middle, Love Park. It's actually two blocks away from McGee. Um, so everything is pretty close and pretty walkable, but I'll show you that on the next slide. So this is just to show um, where everything is located. Can you see my cursor? I don't know if you can. Um, but McGee is like the top left of, sorry, the top, top left of the right picture. And then on the bottom right of the second picture, that's where Jefferson Main Hospital is. And those are the two hospitals we spend most of our time, especially inpatient, but also outpatient as well. Um, and so you might ask like where do residents live? Um, so mostly it's around this area, around City Hall, around Center City. There's some that go a little bit north to like Fairmount, um, some are in Grand Hospital area, some are in University City. So it really depends, everyone's spread out. But I would say about like 50% live in or around Center City. Um, the other 50% they are kind of in the burbs of, of like outside Philly or they're in Jersey and they just commute over. Um, so it depends, usually that's more like people with families, um, but we all try to get together. And as you see, you can pretty much kind of get um, to everywhere you need to rotation wise. Um, if you live there walking, biking, some residents have scooters. And then I know a resident who is able to take public transportation everywhere. He's great at it. So um, really accessible, really easy to get around. So this is our uh, main hospital. Uh, and so when you're there for like consults or an outpatient rotation, um, everything is so close um, to the main hospital. Uh, we also do our didactics there on Wednesdays, Wednesday mornings. Um, that's the bottom right picture. Um, alumni Hall is there, and that's where we have our anatomy lab and all that cool, cool stuff. So that's kind of where we spend a good amount of time, too. Um, and yeah, it's a pretty big hospital, uh, and you do a lot of consults and spinal cord consults there. And then the other hospital we go to a lot is McGee. Um, it's a big standalone rehab hospital. We take all of our call there, and we'll go into the breakdown of different call um what the call numbers are per kind of rotation uh, sorry resin level year um and then on the bottom right is the nice rooftop garden they have where we kind of get up there and we eat lunch every day and, and play ping pong um so it's a good time and it's a great view too uh this slide is just to show where we're from it's actually a year old but still kind of holds true for the most part our residents are um, spread around all of kind of the tri-state area, Philly, Jersey, New York, that kind of stuff. Um, and then you have some outliers, but kind of makes our program interesting and, and diverse in terms of being all over. 
Um, so I think this year we have someone from Missouri, um, but also a bunch of our, our Cali residents and some from Florida too. Um, so a good mix. So this is us. Um, as you can see, our, our PGY3s are, are all masked up in their group photo, but um, this is what the schedule looks like. So as a PGY2, you have most of your inpatient, uh, eight months in total and four months of outpatient. Uh, the way we do our rotations and our blocks is that um, a rotation block is two months long, which I think is, when I was um, applying, I think that was unique and I think it still holds true. And we kind of like that structure because the first month, um, like the first couple of weeks, you're still trying to get used to the service, you're trying to get used to like the outpatient setting and stuff like that. So it takes you a couple of weeks to get acclimated. And then by that time, if you're moving on, then um, you kind of feel like you didn't get your, uh, like fully into it. So the two months have been pretty good in terms of really feeling comfortable and kind of taking, taking over the service and taking kind of being independent after that. So two months, two month box, um, as a two, it's either SCI, TBI, um, CB or medically complex. Usually you get two of SCI or TBI, but it's always a mix. Um, and then outpatient is at Jefferson. We um, we have a two month sports medicine outpatient and another two months, which is kind of a mix of amputee, spasticity, um, MSK general stuff. Um, so those are the outpatients. PGY3, uh, you still have a few, well, let me just pause there. PGY3 and PGY4 are pretty, um, they can go, they can kind of flip. So there's no like set, like as a PGY3, you have to do SCI, you have to do TBI. You can kind of mix and match it. Um, Dr. Mallow, our program director makes a schedule and he kind of takes a lot of input from us in terms of what you want to do. So if you have an inkling that you want to do sports medicine or you want to do pain, um, he can kind of push those to the front or give you more electives in that time and really customize the schedule um, to your benefit. Um, so kind of think of three and four at Jefferson as all in the same bubble. So you'll have your impatient of, um, the complex, peds, um, amputee. Sometimes you can be the senior for a rotation. Um, so you'll maybe take more patients, but you'll kind of um, be like the pseudo attending above the, like the PGY2, just to kind of give you um, a taste of what that would be like having more independence. And then there's a mix of outpatients. Uh, we go to Moss for outpatient. We have EMG at Jefferson and Moss. We go to Rothman uh, for sports spine and some more EMG. Um, and then you have the console services, which is general consults or acute SCI consults. So kind of just um, elaborates a little bit more, spells it out. I will say um, we also have selectives and electives, which are one to two months each. Um, and the selective is basically anything in-house at Jefferson, um, whatever department, Dr. Mal is pretty good with most of the program directors and can kind of figure something out. And then your elective usually is done probably like late three, early four, um, especially for those who are going for fellowship, because that's also the, the time you can take it out of house rotation and do um, like an away, away rotation pretty much like you're applying um, or auditioning for a job. So that's how it is spelled out. Uh, and so we go to kind of a couple different places. So I mentioned, um, or I thought I mentioned as a two, you're pretty much in, in the city, either at McGee or Jefferson bouncing back and forth. Um, we do have TBI at Bryn Mawr and amputee at Moss. You might go there as well. Um, and I think that's a good part of, of our program in that you're not just seeing Jefferson and you're not just seeing McGee. You get the chance to go to different hospital systems and see how rehab is practiced differently. Because as you can imagine, um, even on the East Coast in the same state, two, two systems might do things differently. So I think it's good to see different systems and, and kind of learn about it. So when you go for a job, you know what's out there. So also DuPont uh, for children's, we go there for two months. And then we also are tied to Rothman. Uh, and so we do a lot of our sports buying EMG stuff there. Uh, so this is us, more pictures of us. You'll see a lot of pictures uh, in my slides. So as a PGY2, so all calls at McGee, you'll do about three to four a month, um, usually one or two weekend days. Uh, as a PGY3, you'll do two or three um, per month. You're generally uh, weekdays, but you can get consults every other month on the weekend, which are done at Jefferson. Um, pretty low stress, very educational with the attendings. It's usually like half day, if not less. And then as a PGY4, you're taking uh, one to two calls per month during the weekdays, but uh, you're also back up more often. Um, those are the salary numbers in the middle. And then in terms of 
days off, very important vacation days. We get 20 vacation days. Um, you can request these, I think one or two months in advance and it can be any day. So it's not blocked out. You don't have to take them all in a week. You can mix and match them. They're residents in the past too. Uh, I think it was summertime. So she took like every, every Friday or every other Friday off. Uh, so she could have three day weekends. Uh, you get five education days for any conference that you want to go to. And then one personal day, which is kind of a, a no questions asked. You just let the attending know, um, let Dr. Mal know our program director and then you're good. Um, yeah. This is our leadership. On the left is Dr. Williams, who's our chair. He's also the Dean of the College of Rehabilitation, Rehabilitation Sciences, um, which is kind of the school of different therapists, PTOT um, at Jefferson. And he practices in SCI. Dr. Mallow is in the middle. He's our program director. And he practices in sportsman and does stuff with concussion too. And then Dr. Freed, um, he's the chief medical officer at McGee, but also the vice chair uh, at Jefferson. And he does uh, SCI in pain. We touched on education. Um, we do this on Wednesday mornings, um, four or five hours of protected time. Uh, the attendings at McGee or other um, hospitals where we are, they'll are fully kind of independent on those days. You're not responsible for any notes. You don't come back to admissions or anything or notes or anything of that nature. Um, and then we rotate throughout the year in different blocks of SCI, TBI, CBA. Um, the timing might be different in terms of when something happens, but we cover everything at least once. Uh, during that year and then repeat um, as you move up in PGY levels. And then we're actually in the thick of our anatomy course right now in the cadaver lab at Jefferson, um, which is an eight week course, um, probably two hours in the cadaver lab and like two hours of lecture. Um, and we go through kind of each, each body part. So we did like upper back, sorry, super, superficial back, deep back recently. Then we did um, like posterior form, anterior form. I think we're doing plexus this week. So it's a cool experience. I think that was one of the biggest draws for me as a med student in terms of actually having an anatomy lab. So that's been a lot of fun, um, kind of each year getting to go in there. Teaching wise, um, so we touched on anatomy, you actually are given the opportunity to teach the medical students at Jefferson. Um, you're not alone, there are other instructors there with more experience than us, but it's a good time to kind of get to know the med students and work with them. Um, you also work a lot with the uh, MS3s and MS4s the peripheral nervous system exam and the five minute back exam. We teach that to all the med students that rotate through. Um, actually, sorry, it's part of their, it's part of their block system. Um, and then of course we have a, a good amount of in-house and rotating medical students, especially during like rotation, uh, what away rotation season. Um, and then finally, we also give lectures to internal medicine, usually like knee pain or shoulder pain and how to examine those. Research um, about or even more than 90% of residents at Jefferson Participant Research. And I think that's a big part to having Dr. Graves, um, who's the Vice Chair of Research at the Department of Rehab Medicine at Jefferson. Um, it's super easy to find projects because you basically, once you sign, kind of come in as a PGY2, you send them an email and say, hey, I'm interested in spasticity research. Like, who do I go to? And he connects you right away. Um, so I've done a couple of projects uh, with a bunch of other residents with him, but it's really easy um, to get involved, which is a good thing. Um, Funding wise for education, uh, PGY 2s get $400, PGY 3s $800, and then PGY 4s $1,600. So you can use these for conferences, you could use these for books, Q banks. Um, I think as a four, you can even use some of that money for um, the board exams. And then uh, if you're going to present something at a national conference like AAP or APMNR, you can get additional funds as well. Uh, more pictures of us um, with our recent twos in the top left. Fellowships. So we have two, and actually the SCI fellowship is brand new. We have our first fellow this year, Renee. Um, Spasticity is another fellowship that we have. That's been going on for a little bit. Um, and then the other ones that are kind of like in-house-ish, um, we're really close to those programs. We have Sports Med, uh, which is like Jefferson Family Medicine and Rothman, uh, Sports Fine at Rothman, Pain Medicine with Jeff Anesthesia, uh, Neuromuscular at Jeff Neurology, Headache at Jeff Neurology and then functional and palliative medicine at Jeff Gamma Medicine. So we've all had recent graduates go into those programs um, and they're attending lecture us all the time. We rotate with them very closely. Uh, and then just to show you more of where our graduates go, um, the recent class, sports spine at Rothman, um, also at OSS in York, 
uh, sports medicine with Jefferson Family Medicine, uh, pain with Jefferson Pain. So you can see kind of this is where we usually are. And then it's usually a pretty good distribution every year. I would say maybe 60% fellowship, 40% go out and work. Um, so I think, I think I'm coming to the end of my slides, but um, so why Jefferson? Really um, a couple of reasons. Uh, I think we're strong kind of academically in terms of um, the anatomy and the didactics that we have. Um, our, our attendings like to touch upon that we've only had three department chairs. That's kind of add to me, but uh, I guess it shows consistency. Um, more on the didactics portion, 100% board pass rate. I didn't touch on the citywide EMG um, gate uh, orthotics course. That's shared between us and uh, Temple Moss. Oh, and Penn Medicine as well. So each of us hosts, um, so we host the EMG, uh, Temple Moss hosts the, hosts the gate, gate course, and orthotics is by Penn. Um, so it's nice to meet those residents and kind of work with them and learn with them. Um, it's a great city to get around to. There's always something that, to do. Um, easy access to Jersey and the beaches, and there's a bunch of hiking spots around. Um, and then I touched upon, we have a diverse resident crew. Um, we hang out weekly now that the weather is nice, now that COVID's a little bit, fingers crossed, better. But um, I think that's all I had for you guys. Um, oh yeah, we have We're our Instagram. Five minutes left for like questions and stuff. And yeah, yeah, we'll take questions. Yeah. Um, and I'll stop my rambling. Uh, but that's her Instagram that Dr. Mahalo runs. So if you wanna give us a follow, check us out. That'd be cool too. Um, and if any questions that you have, feel free to shoot me an email. Favorite part of living in Philadelphia? It's a good question. Um, for me, I'm a big sports guy. So I think it's being able to get to, um, like easily get to all the sports games. Um, still a little hurt from the six year season. We won't talk about that too much, but um, you can take uh, the train down and all the stadiums are next to each other. Xfinity Live is there too. Uh, I think I mentioned it too. We, as a residency, we love uh, going to happy hours, different places. So if you get tired of Center City, you'll go to Fairmount and experience what's up there. Um, if that gets boring, get Fishtown. There's always different like neighborhoods that you can kind of check out. Um, so I think there's always something new in Philadelphia. Do PGY2s get pain exposure? Um, I don't think in the current schedule, no. So those four months, well, there's some wiggle room because you get four months of outpatient as a PGY2 um one one of those two month blocks is sports the other one is like general outpatient but there are like days like half days where you're not so it'd be really easy to, to hook up with um the sports fine guys or the jefferson anesthesia guys i know a couple twos have done that but there's technically the answer is no there's no set in stone pain exposure as a two but there's a lot of like um half like free half days here and there where you could do that Will Ben Simmons get traded before, during, or after the season? Also, why is Joel Embiid the GOAT? Um, Simmons, I hope he comes out and plays better, and then we can trade him. Um, and Joel Embiid, he's just, I mean, he's heart, heart and soul of the city. Any good pizza nearby? Um, yes. It's not the same. I will, I, will, I will say it's not the same as New York City pizza. Um, there's a place called Joe's that we like. There's a place across from McGee that you should not eat at, and the patients eat there, and I would just not recommend it don't do that um but there is good pizza and there's good food commute like between clinical sites so as a two um trust the process as the as a two uh they told us that uh you wouldn't you probably would need to have your car nearby like not every month um but there's some rotations you need to so like Bryn Mawr and Mosh you'll need a car for me my goal as a two is to not drive anywhere and I achieved that um, we had, we had one like, um, outpatient site for spasticity and Paoli, and I would like take the train there because parking can be expensive in the city. It's like, could be two to 300 bucks per month. Um, so I am to not drive. So for the most part, I would say I've only had my car in the city for maybe six months out of like three years. So not terrible. 
sports exposure is pretty good. So um, we've had like two two recent graduates at the Jefferson um, with Jefferson Sports Med. We've had a long list of uh, sports fine at Rothman. Uh, so there's a bunch of like sports coverage that they do if you're really um, interested in it. Um, we do a bunch of like sports physicals for like the local colleges. Um, I think you can work with uh, the sports medicine fellow at St. Joe's training room. And so that's a lot of like, like one-on-one -on -one, uh, time with the athletes. So there's like a ton. Um, and then here and there residents will organize um, like coverage for races and stuff like that. We kind of took a hit from COVID and that paused for a little bit, but there's always like different sports stuff going on. Does Jeff help with set the cost at all train pass or bus pass? So I wish um, Mal, my, my good buddy was here because he's the one who will take SEPTA everywhere. I believe there's a discount at the Jefferson bookstore. Don't quote me, but I'm like 90% sure. And so he'll get, I think both there. And so it's like at this kind of cost, um, that where it take, goes out, no, it's a discount of cost. And so he buys them in like bulk. It's like he's going to Costco or something. So he uses that like exclusively and they'll get everywhere through the city. And I think that's all the time we have for this evening. Thank Sweet. you so much, Dr. Lou. No, thank uh, for, you. Thanks so much. Yeah, for sure. Uh, if you want to put your contact information there for people to email you or I think you have it up there already. So yeah, send me an email. Them.